July 22nd, 2008. Hey everybody, I'm Stewie Family, and uh, today I got some breaking news in wrestling right now. I already know this, you can look right now on WWE.com, but WWE is going PG. I mean, you know, uh, like when you first start watching Raw or SmackDown or ECW, like it'll show like this little black box that says TV14. Well, from now on, that black box will say TV PG. Yeah. And it also says on WWE.com, it says this, WWE's family programming has been deemed a PG television rating by their network, network distributors. World Wrestling Entertainment has been engaging families across all generations with their family programming for more than two decades and will continue to do so for years to come with all the action on Raw, SmackDown, and DCW. Until today. Live from Hazard, Kentucky, this is Jamin' John's Wrestling News. Here's your news for Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019. As you just heard a few moments ago, you heard 14-year-old me back on July 22nd, 2008, announcing the PG era in WWE. And now, at 25 years old, just a couple of weeks away from the 11-year anniversary of that announcement, I am here to announce that the PG era is officially over. The WWE is looking to increase the teenager demographic for television programming. Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com is reporting that WWE will be moving away from the PG direction in favor of edgier material. Meltzer commented on the situation with the following statement, They were very aware that they had lost touch with the teenagers. They were afraid of completely losing teenagers, especially when All Elite Wrestling starts. This is a direction they felt they had to go. So there you have it folks, a bombshell announcement, the PG era that lasted for 11 years, is now officially over. I have never been more happier than today. Can't wait to see what World Wrestling Entertainment will be doing from here on out. Also, Dave Meltzer discussed the Street Profits debuting on Monday Night Raw this past week by saying they brought the Street Profits to Raw. That was an interesting one because there's a lot of politics that were involved in the Street Profits being on Raw. Meltzer continued on by saying, They are still technically NXT wrestlers. It was not a call-up, but they are going to be on Raw TV. That was a Heyman move to have new faces on the show. When someone starts, you always want new faces. You always want young talent. You always want to create new wild stories. Thanks to WrestlingNews.co for the quotes. Mike Johnson of PWInsiderElite.com discussed Mike and Maria Kanellis possibly having backstage heat over Maria's pregnancy announcement. Here's what Johnson said, courtesy of HealByNature.com. There are a lot of people in the company who theorize with me that the entire thing was scripted as their way to get back at Maria and Mike. They signed a deal. She got pregnant right away, back on TV in a minor role. WWE finally signs them to a new contract. And let's face it, they are at the bottom of the ladder in the company. Johnson continued on by saying, They invest in them in what some people believe is a new five-year deal, and they are pregnant again. Some people have definitely raised their eyebrows. Sometimes you don't plan things out. That happens. It's life. But some people in that company have definitely raised their eyebrows to me going, Really? Are you kidding me? Meanwhile, Maria posted a photo of her pregnancy test results on Instagram to prove that she's telling the truth and wrote underneath the photo, Tough as a mother. As you seen last night on SmackDown Live, Samoa Joe wanted a handshake from Kofi Kingston. Instead, Kofi ended up giving Joe the middle finger, and it was shown visibly on television. Of course, the social media version of the video had the middle finger censored, so this lines up with the PG era officially being over. Well, Offspray responded to Seth Rollins' public apology from yesterday with the following tweet on Twitter. Will Offspray said, Apology accepted. Just buy me a Nando's. Honestly, nothing but respect for you, sir. Just a bit of banter in my mind. I've followed your career since you were Tyler Black. I know it's not all the money, and it's about love. Keep flying your flag and having fun. I'm really happy that these two were able to put this behind them and move on. 
Nikki Cross is expected to get a major babyface push in the coming months. Here is what Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com noted about Nikki Cross. Meltzer said, The storyline is that Nikki deserves the title shot. The whole thing is to make Nikki into a big-time babyface. That's the goal here is for her to feud with Alexa. Essentially, Nikki is in the role that Bailey should have been in that they completely botched. They couldn't go back to Bailey with it because it's just too far gone, and Bailey has been there for too long to go back to that role. Bailey is in her new role that she graduated into, and Nikki Cross is in that original role. Matt Jackson recently announced that Private Party has signed deals with All Elite Wrestling following their performance at Fighter Fest. Matt Jackson said, Literally right when Private Party stepped back through the curtain after their match at Fighter Fest, Nick and I offered them full-time contracts. Star-making performances like that deserve to be rewarded. Thanks to WrestlingNews.co for the quotes. F4WOnline.com is reporting that Raw Executive Director Paul Heyman has been a big supporter of Ricochet, and that has been a contributing factor of Ricochet's push. In addition to that, Dave Meltzer noted that Ricochet is a guy who can appeal to teenagers, and WWE is trying to increase the teenage demographic for Raw and SmackDown. Also in an interview with Christine Lee of Fair Game, AJ Lee commented on a possible return to WWE by saying, I say never say never. Every time I have said never in my life, I have ended up doing the thing, like, oh my god, I'm never going to date a wrestler. I will never date another wrestler. Then it keeps going, and I married one. I say that, and I don't know what the future holds. To not hold your breath, but never say never. Thanks to WrestlingNews.co for the quote. And finally, here on Jam and John's Wrestling News, NBA star Enos Cantor recently expressed interest in a possible WWE run down the line. Cantor, who is six foot eleven, recently agreed to a two-year, ten million dollar deal with the Boston Celtics, so he won't be going into WWE right away. Call me crazy here, but I would really like to see Enos Cantor in WWE. Of course, for those that don't know, Enos Cantor played college ball for the University of Kentucky Wildcats. And I really liked him back whenever he was playing for Kentucky. Uh, I remember watching Big Blue Madness whenever he made his debut with UK. And he came out as the undercanter. They dimmed the lights down and had purple lights. And he came out with Undertaker's jacket and cowboy hat on. And it was the most hilarious thing ever. But Enos Cantor has always been a big professional wrestling fan. And I would be interested and pretty excited to see a former Wildcat in the wrestling ring, so that's something that I would really like to see. That is your news for Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019. I hope all of you have an amazing 4th of July tomorrow. Be sure to stay safe out there on the roads, and of course, stay safe shooting off those fireworks. And if you're drinking a little bit tomorrow, be sure to have a designated driver or stay at a friend or girlfriend or boyfriend's house. Don't want you out there on the road drinking and driving. Don't do that. Remember, friends don't let friends drive drunk. And remember the true meaning of Independence Day. Remember the ones that fought for your freedom. Remember, all gave some, some gave all. Check back here on Friday for another great Jamin' John's Wrestling News Flash Briefing on Amazon Alexa devices, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and iTunes. Follow me on Twitter at John Caldwell, J-O-N-C-O-L-W-E-L-L. Follow me on Instagram, The Jamin' John. If you'd like to sponsor Jamin' John's Wrestling News or your wrestling promotion, want to get your next big event out, you can email me, jzcallwell at gmail.com. That's J-Z-C-O-L-W-E-L-L at gmail.com. Big shout out to Ryan Hurdle and Tony Nelson for subscribing to my Patreon. You too can subscribe to me by going to patreon.com slash John. I have free packages on there ranging from 3 to $7. Not a whole lot of money. I would really appreciate it if you supported me a little bit financially. Once again, that's patreon.com slash John. This is Jamin' John saying thanks. Goodbye, and God bless America.